like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good evening, sisters and brothers. Good evening, Father. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God of mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord, as our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened. So may our hope of resurrection for our departed servants also find new strength. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food. On this mountain, he will remove the morning veil covering all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every cheek. He will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth, for the Lord has said so. That day it will be said, See, this is our God in whom we hoped for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We exult and we rejoice that he has saved us. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my help. The Lord is my light and my help. The Lord is my light and my help. 
Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Before whom shall I shrink? The Lord is my life and my help. There is one thing I ask of the Lord, for this I long, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to savour the sweetness of the Lord, to behold his temple. The Lord, the Lord is my light and my help. O Lord, hear my voice when I call. Have mercy and answer. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face. The Lord is my light and my help. I am sure I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Hope in him. Hold firm and take heart. Hope in the Lord. The Lord is my light and my help. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Hope is not deceptive because the love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which has been given us. We were still helpless when, at this appointed moment, Christ died for sinful men. It is not easy to die even for a good man, though, of course, for someone really worthy, a man might be prepared to die. But what proves that God loves us is that Christ died for us while we were still sinners. Having died to make us righteous, is it likely that he would now fail to save us from God's anger? When we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, we were still enemies. Now that we have been reconciled, surely we must count on being saved by the life of His Son? Not merely because we have been reconciled, but because we are filled with joyful trust in God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have already gained our reconciliation. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. It is my Father's will, says the Lord, that I should lose nothing of all that He has given me and that I should raise it up on the last day. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, God. Jesus explained. I bless you, Father, Lord of heaven and of earth, for hiding these things from the learned and the clever, and revealing them to mere children. Yes, Father, for that is what it pleases you to do. Everything has been entrusted to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. Just as no one knows the Father, except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. Shoulder my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Yes, my yoke is easy and my burden light. Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, good evening, sisters and brothers. Good evening, Father. So we gather this evening to pray for our beloved dead. Every year during this time, the office will get many mass intentions for the repose of the souls of our faithful departed. So why do we pray for our dead? Is it out of obligation? Is it out of our love for deceased family members? Or is it merely pious comfort for those who grieve? Or is it a proclamation of faith made in love and hope? 
Last night in All Saints Day, we dwell upon those men and women who have given us examples of heroic virtue and gave us clear examples of what holiness looks like, offering us encouragement that all of us can get. I have been to Columbaria or cemeteries in different places over the years. While there, I always find myself wondering as I look out over the many natures and graves of people's loved ones. I ask myself this question, what was the faith of these people like? How did they approach their own death? I wonder if they believed in the power of Christ's death and resurrection. Certainly, probably many did. In the world today, many people fear death, especially now as the world is facing the COVID-19 crisis with 1.17 million deaths and 44 million infections to date. As human beings, we have a natural fear of death and we rebel against its apparent finality. How often have I heard someone say, when having to suffer with some ailment, it beats the alternative, meaning it is better than dying. We would say in response, that's it. People often do not share their faith life with others. It remains personal and private. So we don't really know what they believe about death or even more specifically their own death. But if the whole goal of life is to prepare us to enter into eternity with the Father who has created us in love, why would we not look at our own death with great anticipation if we claim to be people of faith? But people fear the unknown. They fear leaving all their loved ones behind. They also fear judgment for actions they have committed in life. There is this old thing entitled Pilgrim Song that says, Man is lonely by birth. He is only a pilgrim on earth. Born to be king, time is but a temporary thing. Only on lone while on earth. In the last verse says, man is longing for one, for a song in a place in the sun, a home up above, where every day is lived in love. For rest when the journey is done. So life on earth is temporary, a transition to the afterlife. We recognize that we are not in control of life, all life's twists and turns. So it is important that we recognize our mortality and as Christians believe in the resurrection. To believe in the resurrection is to come to realize just how much God loves us in spite of our imperfections, in spite of the ways we don't fully love others. That in spite of it all, we have a God whose heart's desire is life with us, here and now and in the life to come. To believe in the resurrection is to turn away from sorrow to a life of hope and promise. Saint Pope John Paul II put it in perspective beautifully, and I quote him, If you know the eternal love who created you, you also know that there is an immortal soul within you. There are various seasons in life if by chance you feel winter approaching, I want you to know that it is not the last season because the last one will be spring, the springtime of the resurrection. Your whole life extends infinitely beyond its earthly limits. Heaven awaits you, end of quote. So what then shall we do? How will we respond to the hope we have for ourselves and all the faithful departments? I propose two things. One is to live our life to the full, knowing that we are just pilgrims of here on earth. Do acts of kindness as we will never pass this way again. 
We will take advantage of every opportunity to be of service to one another, to touch each other's lives, to manifest God's love to people around us, to remember that we are brothers and sisters in Christ, and we help each other in carrying life's burdens together. Pope Francis's latest encyclical, Fratelli Tutti, paragraph 224, says this about kindness. Kindness frees us from the cruelty that at times infects human relationships, from the anxiety that prevents us from thinking of others, from the frantic flaring activity that forgets that others also have a right to be happy. End of quote. So what better way to remember our loved ones or deceased loved ones than a life that is lived for the Lord and for others? Second, we respond in prayer. For us Christians, the everyday event of sensing the presence of our departed loved ones reminds us of a wonderful reality. Our loved ones are still alive. The flashback to their presence in our lives often leads us to say a prayer for them. And we do all these things because we believe in the power of prayer. We believe that our continual pleading to God to bring our loved ones to peace will prepare them to bear the fullness of His love in heaven. We pray because we believe in love. We believe that true love, the love that flows from God and returns to Him, True love remains forever. We sincerely love the members of our family, our friends, and all who have died, and we still love them. It is loving as Jesus loved. We are not expecting anything in return. We just want to express our love for them, and we do this through prayer. The power of prayer is far greater, infinitely greater than we could ever imagine. Often when we pray, we call on the strength of the Almighty One to perform an action beyond our, our capabilities, not beyond His. Today we pray that the Lord heals the wounds of all who are not yet ready to enter into the fullness of His presence. May they be healed. May any part of their lives that, in, that have been close to love be completely open to the presence of God. So we pray today for deceased parents, spouses, children, relatives, and friends. We pray that they were good people, but we also know that they were people with imperfections. So you want them to be capable of receiving the full blast of God's love, so we pray for them. We don't think of people, of loving people to death, but loving them beyond death. We love beyond death because they have not truly died. They have merely fallen asleep. So we continue to pray for them. We pray for them out of our love for them, but we also pray for them out of hope. When we do so, it is a proclamation of the gospel of Christ, of the reality of the resurrection, and of the certainty of the promise of eternal life. May we ever respond in in faith by asking of God in His mercy to grant rest eternal to the souls of the faithful departed, to those whom we love, and to ever ask this out of hope that we proclaim for them and for ourselves. Eternal rest unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. Today, as we remember our departed loved ones, we draw strength and comfort from our relationship with our Lord and Savior, who invites all who are tired and overburdened to come to Him with the promise of rest and faith and joyful hope. We pray that they have been raised from the dead. For the Church, that those in bereavement may find renewed strength from God's Word peace from his presence, and healing from his love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, 
grant us eternal, eternal salvation. salvation. For will lead us that when the time comes, they will draw up fair and equitable guidelines for the distribution of the vaccines for the coronavirus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, grant us your eternal salvation. For the forgotten souls and the souls in purgatory, may God have mercy on them and bring them to eternal life with Him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, grant us your eternal salvation. For all of us, that when the time comes for us to walk in the valley of darkness, no evil will we fear as we know that God is with us always. We pray to the Lord. Lord, grant that your eternal salvation. We pray for our own intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, grant us your eternal salvation. Heavenly Father, may we be steadfast in our belief that your Son is our resurrection in our life, and that an earthly journey ends will be received into your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and rock of human hands become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, root of human hands, become our spiritual drink. Blessed are you, God, forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May God accept the sacrifice and your hands for the praise and glory of all Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servants may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord your God. It is right and just. It is really right and just to our good and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying. As one man he chose to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you with joy, we proclaim, Holy, 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 Holy God, 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 you indeed holy, O Lord, and now we have prayed and gladly gives you praise. For to your Son, O Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting of your sacrifice, may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you with the same spirit, graciously make holy the state of your you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, that is the man we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks and the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you a little bit, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was then, and he took the chalice and giving you thanks and the blessing and gave the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new eternal covenant is to be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim you the head of our and the professor of our and the head of the again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memory of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you thanksgiving this holy living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, recognizing the sacrificial victim, which is that you will to reconcile to yourself, grant that we are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May you make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, to blessed Apostle, glorious Martyrs, with Saint Teresa, with all the saints, and whose continent is such in your presence with a life from failing health. With the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advise the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your premium church on earth, with your servant Francis of Pope and William of Bishop. The order of bishops, all the clergy, and the people you have gained for your own. Listen, gracious, to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. Your compassion and mercy of the Father, gathered to, your, to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Your departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at your passing from this life, you find admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory to Christ our Lord, through whom you have on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command formed by divine teaching we dare to say, Our Father, Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. We graciously grant peace in our days, and may the help of your mercy. We have always free from sin and safe from all distresses. We await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins within the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace, and you in force with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And we will offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Bless are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my room. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant we pray, O Lord, that your departed servants, for whom we have celebrated this Passover sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the God of all consolation bless you. For in his unfathomable goodness he created the human race. And in the resurrection of his only begotten Son, he has given believers the hope of rising again. Amen. Amen. To us who are alive, may God grant pardon for our sins, and to all the dead, a place of light and peace. Amen. So we will all live happily forever with Christ, whom we believe truly rose from the dead. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now the prayer and blessing of the Convary. My brothers and sisters in Christ, a common Christian concern has brought us together to bless the memorial gardens where the ashes of our loved ones are enshrined, awaiting the dawn of the Lord's coming in glory. We raise our hearts from earth to heaven and look to Christ, who suffered and rose again for our salvation. He has commanded that we keep watch for His coming and has promised to meet us when we rise again. Let us pray. God of all consolation, our bodies return to the dust from which they were shaped. In your way of mercy, you have turned this condition of darkness and death into a proof of your loving care. You will that your own son be laid to rest in a new tomb so that he might rise from it, the victor over death and offer us the pledge of our own salvation. Grant that this memorial gardens placed under the sign of the cross may, by the power of your blessing, be a place of rest and hope. May the ashes enshrined here rest in your peace and rise immortal at the coming of your Son. May this place be a comfort to the living, a sign of their hope for an ending life. May prayers be offered here for those who sleep in Christ and in praise of your mercy. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. 